This is Physics Medicine Online Tutorial Class, organized by Mrs. Okuma I. Now, today, we want to look at dispersion of white light. Dispersion of white light. Now, let's look at our specific objectives. By the end of the lesson, students, you should be able to, one, define dispersion, two, explain the term monochromatic light three use a color triangle to explain the additive color mixing four draw a label ray diagram showing the arrangement of the apparatus necessary to obtain a pure spectrum of white light now remember we are talking on the topic dispersion of white light now According to the experiment that was performed by a non-scientist, Isaac Newton, we observe that when light is passed through a prism, an elongated colored patch of white light is obtained on a screen placed behind the prism. Now from this diagram, you can see a rectangular glass prism or the rectangular glass block. Now, according to an experiment performed by uh, this Isaac Newton, we find out that this white light, on getting passing through this prism, it will refract. And on refraction, we obtain an elongated color patch of light. And these colors are red lights, orange lights, yellow lights, green lights, blue lights, indigo lights, and violet uh, lights. Now, the color pattern is what we call the spectrum of white lights. The spectrum consists of, as we have seen in the diagram, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. We abbreviate it with what we call Roybeef for easy remembrance. We are arrow stand for your red light, orange light, yellow light, up to the violet uh, lights in that order. Now, when another identical prism is placed to intercept the refracted ray, as we have seen below, as we can see below, you have the same arrangement of colors that will emerge on the screen. But this time, you find out that the colors will be widely separated. The colors of light will be widely what? Separated. Let's look at this diagram below. Now, from this diagram, you find out that when we use a second prism, if a second prism is used, this is the first prism. Now, this is the second there, prism. So when we use another identical prism, it will intercept this refracted rays, as we have seen here, in this arrangement. But this time around, you find out that these colors, they are widely what, separated, unlike before. So here you have the red light, orange light, and others, they will be widely what, separated. But in a situation whereby the second prism is inverted, let's see the diagram below. Where the second prism is inverted, we can see from the diagram that if the second prism is inverted, the colors are seen to disappear. And only a patch of white light will be visible on the screen. Now, the disappearance of the colors is as a result of their recombination to produce white light. Now look at the first prison and the second prison. Here, remember the two prisons are identical. Now we invert the second prison. We find out that these colors now that has been widely separated, we recombine themselves to produce white light again. So that is what we get using this uh, prison. Now let's look at dispersion. Remember our topic, dispersion of white light. Our topic says what? Dispersion of white light. Now what do we mean by dispersion? Now, 
dispersion is the separation of white light into its component colors of red, orange, blue, indigo, and what? Violet. Now, dispersion is due to the fact that different colors of white light travels at different uh, speeds through the world glass and each color is therefore refracted in a slightly different direction or angle through the world glass now with careful observation of the spectrum it shows that the violent light is deviated most as we have seen in that diagram the violet light is deviated what most violet light has the highest what deviation now since red light is deviated least so red light is deviated least while violet light is deviated the uh, most now it follows that each change of speed on entering the glass is also least therefore red light travel in the glass with the highest warp speed while the violet light travel in the glass with the least uh, speed remember we said that the violet light has the world's most deviation now let's look at that diagram again let's look at the diagram now look at the diagram now this is the white light on entering the prison it will refract now look at the red light and look at the what the violet uh, light. Now when you talk about deviation, you find out that the violet light deviated what most, while the red light deviated the uh, least. But now when you not consider their speed of motion, you find out that the red light has the highest speed, while the violet light has the least uh, speed. So the violet light travels with the least speed on entering the glass, while the red light travels with the greatest uh, speed on entering the glass, and that is why it is deviated least. Violet is deviated most, but it travels with a lesser word, the least uh, speed. Now, but when we consider, if we consider vacuum, in a vacuum, all these colors of light, they travel with the same speed. So when we now consider vacuum, that is the speed of light, if we consider the speed of light in vacuum, that is empty space, we find that that in a vacuum, all the colors they travel with the same speed and what is the speed of light in vacuum 3.0 times 10 raised to power 8 meters per second now the rainbow is formed by the dispersion of sunlight by spherical rain drop floating in the air so we used to see rainbow now let's look at monochromatic light monochromatic lights now what do we mean by monochromatic light is a light of one wavelength a light of what one wavelength now let's look at the diagram we have a monochromatic yellow light a monochromatic yellow light on entering the, the glass prison it will refract and come out again with the same yellow light and that is monochromatic uh, light so monochromatic light is a light of one word wavelength light of one wavelength that is the monochromatic uh, light now monochromatic light this is light of one wavelength and when such light of one color or wavelength is passed through a prism refraction does what occurs without a uh, dispersion so monochromatic light is light of one wavelength that is light of one, light of one color and when this light as we have seen in the diagram when it passes through the prism it will refract 
and come out with the same word light without word dispersion so this is monochromatic light of monochromatic yellow light on entering the prison it will refract and still come out with what yellow word light without any word dispersion now monochromatic light of a yellow color is conveniently obtained from a sodium lamp a special lamp containing sodium what vapor a special light containing what sodium what vapor now Now we look at production of a pure spectrum. How do we produce a pure spectrum? A pure spectrum is that in which the color are clearly separated or distinct from each other. So when you talk about a pure spectrum, those colors will be clearly separated from each other. There will be no overlapping of the colors. That is a pure spectrum. Now, the spectrum produced by a prism is an impure spectrum because the different colors do what? They overlap. So, the spectrum we have seen before is impure because of overlapping of different colors. Now, to produce such a pure spectrum, what do we need for production of a pure spectrum? We need what? Two converging lenses and a prism in an arrangement as we can see below from the arrangement below let's see how we can produce a pure spectrum now let's look at the diagram we make use of two words converging lenses a prism so look at the diagram this is the first lens the converging lens this is the second lens now this is your glass prism, the rectangular prism, sorry the triangular prism and this is your screen. Now this is your source of light for illumination. Now we have seen the arrangement. Now the apparatus consists of the following components. A narrow, a narrow slit, that is the narrow slit illuminating illuminated by a bright source of white light so this is the white light that will pass through this air uh, slit slit is an opening so this is the white light which will pass through this opening that is the slit now the slit produces a series of narrow color images which minimizes the the chances of overlapping what colors now the second one is the lens L1 the first lens the first converging lens what does it do it produces the parallel rays that are incident on the prism so these first lens these are the parallel rays it will it will produce these parallel rays that will be incident on the prism. Now the slit is placed at the principal focus of the lens to ensure that parallel rays are produced by the lens. Now the next one is your 60 degree prism that is the equilateral triangular prism. Now what does it do? It disperses the white light into what? Beams of colored light. So this prism now, the function is to disperse this white light into what? Into what? Beams of colored lights in the form of parallel rays, but at an angle to each other, but at an angle to other what? Beams. So you see it, these are different beams of light. You are going to do what? Generate on entering the prism now the next one is the next converging lens l2 what will it do this converging lens l2 we collect the parallel beams of different colors 
So these parallel beams, now these converging lengths, we collect them. If we collect these beams of different colors and bring each to a separate focus in the focal plane of the lens. So it will bring each of them to a separate uh, focus. So you can see this one, one, two, three, four, and others we did not draw. It will bring each of them to a separate world focus. Then lastly, we have the screen. So you can see this, this is representing the screen. A screen at the focal plane of the lens L2 on which the colored beam of the spectrum appear well defined. So it is at the screen that you now see the colors they will be well defined. So here yeah, now this is a color, this is another color. So that is how you see the colors. They will be well defined. They will be clearly seen. They will be clearly seen because there is no overlap. So that is how we can produce a pure spectrum. So we produce a pure spectrum using a wide source of light. Then you have a narrow slit, an opening. You have two converging lenses, L1 and L2. Then you have your 60 degree triangular prism for dispersion of the white light. Then this is your screen where the beam of light appear well defined without overlap. But if the second lens is not used, we are going to obtain what we call a fairly pure spectrum. Now, if we fail to use a second lens, we are going to obtain what we call a fairly pure world spectrum. So the spectrum will be fairly pure. It will not be a pure world spectrum as we can see in this uh, diagram. So here, the spectrum will be pure, will not be, will be fairly what? Pure. It is not a pure spectrum, but we call it a fairly what? Pure world spectrum. Now, let's look at colors of objects. Colors of objects. Now, the color of an object depends on the color in the light incidence or falling on it and also on the absorption and reflection of this light by the object. Now, the color of objects you are going to obtain, we say it depends on the colors in the light incident or falling on that object. It also depends on the absorption and reflection of this light by the object. Now we've talked about reflection. Hereby we say that white light, when when light falls on objects that are transparent or white objects, we say that white they are good what reflectors. It will throw them back. They will, the light will be reflected back. But when it falls on black objects or dark bodies, we say they will be what? Absorbed. Now we want to look at how we obtain colors of objects. We say that the colors of objects depends on the color in the light that is incident on that uh, object. And it also depends on the absorption and reflection of the light by the object. Depends on how the object we absorb the light or how it will reflect the light. Now, a white object appears white in the day. Why? In the day, any white object appears what? White. Why? Because it reflects equally all colors of the spectrum. Since white is a good reflector, in a day or in any white light, any object that falls on a white object that object appears a uh, white. Now, if a red light is incident on it, it appears what? Red. Now, when you get a red light or a red right light from a bulb and shine it in a white cloth, what color will it appear? 
that portion it will appear what red now a black object in the daylight absorb all colors of the spectrum and reflect none at all so in a daylight a black object will appear what black so if it is illuminated by any color example blue light it still appears what black why because black is a good word absorber any color that you shine on black clothes in a day the black colored body we absorb them all and that color will appear what black now a green leaf appears green in white light because white is a good word reflector or in the day so in the day any green leaf still appears what green because white is a good word reflector it will reflect it back so because it reflects green but absorb all the other colors of white light now the green leaf looks dark or black if it is illuminated in a dark room by blue word light so if it is in a dark room that you place that green leaf it will appear what black now a red rose flower that appears red in the daylight is also red only in a red light it will appear red also in the day a rose red flower will appear red in the day and also in a red what light but in a black light what will happen it will do what appear what black now if red flower will appear black hence if the red flower will appear black this is because it absorb all the blue light leaving no color to be reflected so the blue light it will absorb it and that is why it will appear black in the darker room now having seen colors of objects let's look at what we call additive mixing of color additive mixing of color now by mixing the different colors of the spectrum a variety of colors can be obtained we cannot however obtain red green and blue colors by mixing other world colors these three colors are therefore called what primary colors the adding of primary colors to produce other colors is what we call additive color mixing or additive combination of what colors now we are talking about white light and we are talking about dispersion remember we said that when white light enters a triangular prism it will disperse dispersion occurs and different colors of light will be obtained which we have mentioned red orange yellow and, and others now when you mix different colors of this white light which we call spectrum we obtain varieties of air colors but we said that we cannot obtain red green and blue colors by mixing any word colors and that is why we call them the primary colors so these primary colors they include the red light green light and blue lights we cannot they are they stand out on their own now when we now mix other colors to obtain another color of light we call it additive color mixing or additive combination of what colors now secondary colors they are colors we obtain by mixing any two of the primary colors for example when we mix red and green we produce a yellow light now yellow cyan and magenta they are the secondary colors of light now all the three primary colors when we combine them together we produce another white light so when we add red light green light and blue light that is the primary colors they are going to produce back a white light now we can remember this using what we call the color triangle 
Now let's look at the color triangle. Now at the edge of edges of this triangle, you have the red, you have the blue, and you have the what? Green. Now these are the primary colors, which we cannot obtain by mixing any what? Color. They stand out on their own. So these primary colors, they are red, blue, and what? Green. Now we said that when we mix two primary colors together, we obtain secondary colors as we have said. So when we mix red and blue, we obtain magenta. When we mix red and green, we obtain yellow light. When we mix blue and green, we obtain what? Cyan light. So magenta, yellow, and cyan, they are the secondary what? Colors. Now we said that when we combine the three primary colors we will get back our what white light when we combine red blue and green we will produce our white what light then a primary color when we mix it with appropriate secondary color that, that is the color triangle that directly opposite to it. We equally produce a white light. What do we mean by that? Now, this is a green light, which is the primary color. When we mix it with a secondary color directly opposite to it, which is magenta, we will produce white light. Now, this is blue light, which is the primary color. When I mix it with a secondary color directly opposite to it, which is yellow light, I will produce another white light. Now, this is my red light, which is primary. When I mix it with a secondary color directly opposite to it, that is cyan, I will equally produce white light. So, these colors which we produce, we call them the complementary colors. We call them what? complementary word colors we call them what the complementary word colors so such colors which produces white light when mixed together in suitable proportion we call them complementary colors thus green and magenta they are complementary colors the same thing with blue and white yellow also red and white cyan they are complementary word colors. Now let's look at for paints or the one you can do using your poster color. Which is not the white, which is not light. For your paints, for your paints, the primary colors using your paint or your poster color are red blue and what yellow red blue and yellow are your primary what colors red blue and yellow are the primary colors for paint now when you combine the three colors together you can practice that at home blue red and yellow you will generate what black color now when you combine these two primary colors red and blue you generate purple, that is secondary color. Red and yellow, you generate what? Orange color. Then blue and yellow, you generate what? Green color. So for our paints, purple, orange, and green, they are the secondary colors. White, blue, red, and yellow, they are the primary colors. And now when you mix yellow, and purple they are complement to each other you produce a black color paint when you mix blue and orange together that is the primary color with the secondary color opposite to it you produce a black color black color paint so blue and orange they are what complementary the same thing when you mix red and the secondary color opposite to it, that is green. Red and green are complementary. You will generate what? A black paint. Now, 
we go over to our evaluation so having seen the spectrum of white light that when white light passes through a 60 degree triangular prism the white light disperses into a spectral colors of red orange yellow and others they are seven in numbers we find out that, that violet has the most deviation while red light deviated least and red light has the greatest speed on entering the glass while the violet have the, the least speed on entering the glass but we find out that, that the light we produce they are not a pure spectrum we've equally talked about how to produce a pure world spectrum and the apparatus we can use to produce a pure spectrum now let's look at our evaluation question number one explain what you understand by the term monochromatic lights number two what is this passion three with the head of a color triangle explain the additive additive color word mixing so this additive color mixing is the one we generate using the white lights why the subtractive color mixing is the one we generate using your paint another question is explain what is meant by the pure spectrum of a object lastly draw a label diagram showing the arrangement of apparatus necessary to obtain a pure spectrum of white light thank you for your patient listening i remain your teacher mrs okuma i See you in another class.